Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, before we begin, we want to share that we will be recording tonight's meeting. We do plan to share this recording publicly in the event that a student, parent, staff, or community member would like to know what was discussed. If you do not wish to be recorded, please let us know at this time. Everybody's good with the movie stars? Perfect. Thanks very much. We are right on time and it looks like students are ready to go. So we'll go ahead and bring this meeting to order at 6 p.m. And if you would all rise, I believe we have some leaders for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. We have our fifth grade leaders to walk us through the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? This is the first time I want to 
to tell you that we've actually used the stage with the curtains. Okay, when you're ready. such a great audience. So proud of you guys. It is not an easy thing to get into a small group and perform memorized music and they did it. They stepped up. I'm super duper proud of you guys. So they, they've been working on recorder for their fifth grade year in music class. Now this is a, a soprano desk uh, recorder flute and it's commonly used in elementary school music programs because it's such an accessible way to to bridge that transition into high, uh, middle school and high school band and, and it also helps if you're if you're going into choir too why well because it, it gives them really uh, uh, important skills and concepts that they're going to be using over there and they're, they're going to be they have a whole year to really cultivate these, these skills and concepts. So when they go over there, they, they're really ready to go. They don't have to uh, be relearning things. So for example, they're learning instrument technique. So they're, they're learning how to produce a good sound 
on a recorded flute. To do that, they know how to show good posture. Show us good posture. So sitting up straight, basically, right? They know how to hold their recorder properly. Oh yeah, two hands. Two hands is best. And they know how to not make squeaks. What's one way? What's one way? You can have your fingers on the holes completely. Bingo. What's another way? Using mouse and air. Mouse size air. That's a trick that I, I learned a while ago as, a, as a, an elementary school teacher. Um, it helps kids to understand that gentle air is a mouse size, but it's not when it's not so gentle. It's cat size or dog size. And of course, if you use dog size air, oh, you're holding your ears because <laughs> it's a really high pitched squeak. So any, anything else? I think you got it. And. So that, and they are learning how to read music notation. So they're, they're learning the, the written pitches, they're learning the fingering that goes with those written pitches, and they're having to produce a good sound with those written pitches. Plus, they're using their, their, they're building on their rhythm reading skills. So it's a lot of things thrown in there just to play this little recorder flute. On top of that, they're doing what I like to call uh, musical teamwork. It's ensemble playing. So they're learning how it's, it's better to sound in the group sound. And it's also, it's important that you play your part loud enough so that others can hear you. So it's a balance. Blend and balance is what band directors call it. So that's one thing. Also, perseverance. So we're all counting on you to play your part, and even if you mess up, you keep going, because we're counting on you. So that's another thing they're learning. And then, last but not least, uh, they are, they've memorized that music, so it's, it's empowering them to learn that music well enough so that they can perform it in front of an audience and have it memorized. So, way to go, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. We're going to just switch with transition to our presentation. Thank you, fifth graders. If we can give them another round of applause. Students and families looking for their name, pointing it out, 
And it's a way that really represents who we are and how we are connected to PTR. We also really work on inspiring our students to feel safe and that they can do really hard things. But we also want to make sure that they understand what it is to be a PTR student. And so we do have the theme of being safe, respectful, responsible, and kind. If you ask any of our students, the number one thing I say is, what do I always expect? And they will tell you, always be kind. So I'm going to turn it over to our amazing assistant principal, Ms. Hill, to talk about those school-wide expectations and how we can it. <laughs> All right. Um, it is not a difficult job at our school to recognize the hard work of our students. If you spend any time in our hallways, uh, you will see examples of safe, responsible, respectful, and kind behavior everywhere. So we work really hard to recognize that through uh, what we call Mountaineer tickets, uh, explicitly letting students know what we saw. Uh, those names get drawn daily for principal pencil. We put them up on the board here that you can see when we get to 100. Uh, leadership, uh, they'll, they'll talk a little bit about, I won't, I won't do a spoiler on that one, they'll talk about what we get, what they have been involved with that. Um, uh, Spirit Weeks, uh, we've connected even uh, with Officer Boone, who uh, we draw at the end of the month, uh, five to ten other Mountaineers to enjoy with your floats with him. So really working on uh, recognizing that hard work inside and outside of the classroom for our students here. All right, so I'm gonna kick us off this evening with what we've been calling a little bit of talking and a whole lot of experiencing of the work that is happening here at Tarmian. And so um, I just wanna chat with you a little bit about our school improvement goal number one. And this one is really around increasing our students' sense of self-efficacy, that idea that I could be in it in the hard work, and we know that that happens by feeling connected, being safe, belonging, all of those things. And so we really wanted to go from 56% of our students having a strong sense of that to uh, 66 in our K2. And in our three through five, from 47% to 57%. And you can see here we've had a fall screener and a winter screener. Um, and we have definitely seen an increase in both of those spaces. And we continue, we're looking forward to an end of the year where we're gonna get to see that. I'm gonna actually have a few of our amazing staff come on up and talk about some of the work they're doing in class that we believe is really driving this growing sense from our students. So I'm going to invite Sierra Neal to join me. Okay, so in keeping with the self-efficacy and building agency, um, the first grade classroom started out at the beginning of the year setting whole group goals. So on the left, you can see our weekly goal. Um, Right now, our goal is around the expectations at our school, which is respect. We have moved beyond being responsible and safe. We've got that down. So they set their goal. We talk about which one they would like to focus on for the time. And then underneath where you see strategies and kind of to the side by the light bulb, the kids actually come up with those things. I don't give them the look fors. They tell me what they would see and what they would hear to meet those goals. And then the respect bingo on the other side, um, you will see that there's a little bit of like a salmon color with the white pops on it. That's every day that they believe they met their goal. So every morning we come together in our morning meeting, we review the goal that we have set, which is respect. We talk about the strategies, and then they show me a thumbs up or a thumbs down for the day prior. We do a little self-reflection. And regardless what they show me on their thumbs, I always tell them, okay, I want you to turn and talk to somebody near you. What did you see yesterday or what did you hear that aligns with this and do you think we met our goal? They know they can do it. They are very brutally honest sometimes to a point where I'm like, oh, okay, I thought you met it, but maybe you think you did it, uh, which is good. It means they are really self-reflecting. They really are paying attention to these things. And so we just make sure this is something we focus on every day and reiterate throughout the day. And then that has transitioned into students setting personal goals. So now students have set a learning goal for the remainder of first grade, and we identified across academic areas some goals that we want to meet before we leave first grade. And you'll see that in the red on the posters. The sticky notes are their names for the goal that they chose. 
And before I had them really write everything down on their goal sheet, they came up with strategies for how they could meet their goals. Again, it was not something I gave to them. I wanted to know what steps are you willing to take to meet that goal? And they chose their, chose their goal, came over to their goal sheet, and you'll see there was an I will statement for academic, and then the how is by doing what? What is one thing you can commit to doing to meeting your goal? And then we did a self-reflection based on some character traits that we really focused on them. Respectful, responsible, safe, and kind. They wrote a goal for that that they want to focus on throughout the remainder of the year, and then they chose a way that they personally will meet that goal just to help build that self-efficacy and agency that they're learning. You're going to get a fantastic opportunity to experience some goal-setting conferences here in just a little bit. Uh, I'd like to invite up Amy Lee and any of our leadership students who are here in the audience to talk about another um, exciting thing that we're doing here at school with our students. Thank you. Come on up, guys. You guys want to get in a little order? So I am very pleased. My name is Amy Lee. I am the uh, person in charge of student leadership this year. It's been so much fun. I've gotten to know so many kids. One thing that we're doing different this year is we're giving every fifth grader the chance to participate. So any child, every um, class gets a month, and every student is able to participate if they want to. So, so far this year, we've had 76 fifth graders participate in leadership. So it's been very exciting. So I just wanted to introduce Jackson Smith, Mirabella Palermo, Ben Gold, and Jake Osling. Um, they are going to tell us a little bit just about what leadership does in our school, how it's building student agency and efficacy, some of the favorite things that they've done, and um, if we have time, do you guys have any questions for them? So, um, like I said, they're amazing kiddos. We are in great hands in our future, so it's been an absolute pleasure to work with them. So, thank you. This year, ETR has given all the fifth graders the opportunity to, to participate in leadership. Each fifth grade class gets a month to lead. Any student in the class is eligible to participate. We have different projects each month, plus jobs around the school. We have the flow drive in November, we have daily and kindergarten and fifth grade classrooms to help them build their reading skills. We are hall monitors that help and reward younger students for walking safely and quietly in the hall. The project for March was a random act of kindness month, where we were where we encourage kindness throughout school by modeling and having a school-wide competition. This month, our leadership team is focused on cleaning up the outside of the school and the shared files inside. Really love how we make decisions about spirit days, posters, and not here to get celebrations. We will our leadership student making announcements start school day every day. We have had 76 fifth graders participate in leadership so far this year. Our roles and responsibilities in leadership have really helped to build our student agency and efficacy. We feel like we have a big responsibility and purpose to be role models for the school and model and show for others how we can make differences even in the smallest ways. We are leaders in gaining and practicing leadership traits that will help us later on in our adult lives and jobs. We have helped make decisions and have voice in decisions like spirit weeks, posters, and mountaineer celebrations. We have had the opportunity to reflect and problem solve after big projects. We are thinking ahead, what could, what could make this easier for the next group of leaders? We have had to persevere through hard projects. The food drive was a lot of work and a lot of rain, but we knew our purpose was to, what our purpose was and to continue to the end, even when it was rough. The results were so worth it. We see our time as classroom helpers as jobs. We are responsible for showing up and leaving on time. We lead our student or students with only a little guidance from adults. We have had to be flexible in our communication and adjust so we can help students become the best readers as they can be. We know these skills will help us our whole lives. Some of our favorite parts of leadership so far this year include we liked helping with the food drive and all the compliments we got. We liked helping design things like Spirit Week and the whole school awards. We liked managing the pickup for the food drive and meeting different staff and students. We really liked doing daily announcements. It felt great to get lots of appreciation for working with kinders and second graders. 
Thank you for allowing us to speak tonight. Are there any questions you have for us? And the what is 
the learning target. What are we doing? And so it's before we've taught anything and the kids just write down. What do they think? So for example, you'll see um, during our rotation, we have what do we measure? And so they just go through and they write down what do we measure? Uh, then we have how do we measure? Uh, and just write, how do we measure? And we're not looking for right or wrong answers, it is just a write down what you think. And then why, which really uh, is the purpose. It's the purpose of why do we measure and the purpose of that unit and what they'll be learning in that unit. Um, and then the how is the success rate. Afterwards, we kind of look over it. They each read what everyone wrote and they write stars. If they agree, they write question marks, they write notes. Uh, and then we revisit it throughout the unit and adjust and change and add to it and it ends up becoming our running record. So by the end of a unit, they can look and see, this is everything we've learned in this math unit, for example, measurement. Uh, and it just anchors our learning throughout the entire unit, especially for a unit such as measurement that's really long, um, they always have it to look back to, refer to, add to, and clarify those misconceptions. A great example of this is uh, today we had a leadership team come in and they're doing what, why, and how rotations to check in on students and uh, see how they're receiving that what, the why, and the how. And uh, one of our students was asked, what are, you, what are you doing and why are you doing it? And they were working on measuring and line plots and uh, he said, well, I'm doing this line plot, and this is why I'm doing it, and this is how I'm doing it. But if you would like to know more, please reference these posters over here. <laughs> and I was told that after, and I was just like, oh my gosh, how wonderful. So it really is just that anchor point um, for their learning. I think, I, I'm not, I don't know, do I need this? Um, I think one of the things that I really appreciate about it as well is because when we get such great information from these posters, the formative data right before we do it. So we look over the posters and then Carly and I would know, for example, with our measurement, they knew a lot about units. Like they knew a lot about inches, feet, how we measure, what we measure. But there was some misconceptions where it was like they couldn't connect it to measuring water or measuring in a different way other than a ruler or a meter stick. And so that kind of guided our lessons. And so every lesson is kind of grounded with what did we add to this poster? What did we, uh, what, did, what came up that the kids answer? Like, well, we know that's not true anymore because we learned yesterday that it's this instead of that. And also it brings out the student voice. So when people ask questions or put a question mark next to a comment on a poster, they don't understand what that means. For example, someone said fish oh, yeah. on what we measure. Someone wrote a question mark. What do you mean we measure fish? So then in class, we said, okay, would whoever wrote, like sometimes they put their initials, sometimes they don't. But we can go back and that, that student got to say, well, I'm a fisherman and I measure my fish every single time. And so we got to connect those ideas and it's not from us, it's student-led. So I think, yeah, which then, real the world, why. yeah, the why. why, the real world application of measurement. Yeah, so I think, I think the students get so much out of it and then Carly and I talk every day after the lesson, like, okay, what do you see, what do you hear, what do you do, and how can you change it, make it better for tomorrow. So, hey guys, our learning and our teaching. And you'll get a chance to participate. <laughs> okay, so uh, another thing we do to uh, connect to learning outcomes for our students is in math, again, in math, um, we do something called table. Uh, we do something called table competition where uh, every student gets a Chromebook and they sit with their tables and they sit two, like you'll see later today, they sit two students um, next to each other and two students across from those, those others. And it, they're a little team and they work on uh, solving math problems that we have already taught them. So it always happens the day after our assessment. So we give our assessment, we collect their data, we collect their assessments, and then they're given this math table competition. They're working on it independently, by themselves with or with their teams, and it gives us a chance to individually conference with each student on their assessment while they are able to clarify misconceptions with each other on math 
problems within that unit. So for example, the measurement unit, after the assessment, they will take a measurement math table competition. We format the questions to look like SBA and IAB questions. So whereas they might not see those type of questions in our curriculum, they're able to generalize their knowledge of that skill and answer those types of questions in a math competition that way. Um, and then while they're doing that, they're using partner talk, which you'll get to see their amazing partner talk, and helping each other out uh, to solve the problem, answer the questions, learn and generalize that skill, and, uh, and then we get the time, which is so hard to find, to individually conference with each student and go over their assessment. And then while we're going over their assessment, we're able to see, oh, you, were, you solved that really quickly. That's not really a misconception you have. And that changes our data and informs our next unit's intervention group. So it's how we get intervention groups and how they get to generalize and further their knowledge on that skill. giving you a forewarning. All right, our last goal before we get you up and experiencing it is really around our multi-tiered systems of support. And in this goal, we have really focused on, um, you may, this may look familiar to you, this is a tool uh, right out of our new bookworms curriculum, um, where it really, it, if you look at it, it, students should be progressing like through the skills of the pyramid as they go. And so knowing that we've had some real gap in learning, uh, as a result of the pandemic, we, we definitely have had students who are significantly behind. And so we really focus on those students, uh, moving them from uh, two years or more being below in these foundational reading skills by 30%. And Marianne is going to share a lot of the exciting work, and then we're going to turn you loose to hear from our students. So I have to have a cheat sheet because my eyes are so bad, I cannot. So. Our student growth data um, through our GI groups. Um, this is showing you the number of students that were at grade level starting in October of 2022. Um, so you'll see that kindergarten is blank because at that time, we don't actually IDI the kindergartners at that time. We want to give them background knowledge on what is in um, In the first grade, uh, we had 31 out of 71 um, first graders that were in grade level. Second grade, 15 out of 62. Third grade, um, 27 out of 63. Fourth grade, 72 out of 173. And in fifth grade, um, 79 to 100, out of 187 kids. So we have definitely seen some growth. So in March, when we were looking at our data, um, kindergarten, um, 47 out of 65 kids were on grade level. First grade, um, the number went up 46 um, to 71. Second grade, 25 out of 62. Third grade, 35 out of 63. Fourth grade, 89 out of 173. And then fifth grade, 82 out of 107. So the number of students that have improved by two or more um, steps in the GI scale, so kindergarten is obviously 47 out of 65 because we've only done it. Um, we um, only started them in December. Um, first grade, um, 61 out of 70 kids have moved two steps. Um, second grade, 38 out of 62. Third grade, 31 out of 63. Um, fourth grade, 41 out of 173. And in fifth grade, 33 out of 187. Um, fourth and um, fifth grade, I want to point out, they're not really um, working through the word study skills, as you saw in the stair step. They're more working in fluency groups and uh, vocabulary and comprehension groups. And those are your long, um, your long skills that the kids keep working on. Um, in the back, you'll see a group of fifth graders that will be performing um, vocabulary and comprehension literacy skill. Um, so this one, so um, the percentage of students two grade levels below um, in October, so in first grade we had 17% of our students that were two grade levels below, 35% in second, 47% in third grade, fourth grade, 37%, and fifth grade, 27%. 
So now in March, when we looked at our data um, for first grade, zero, so the, the percentage of students that were two grade levels below was zero percent, so we decreased it by 17 percent. Second grade, three percent, and it's a decrease of 32 percent. Third grade, 20 percent, it's a decrease of 27 percent. Fourth grade, 26 percent, and it's a decrease of 11 percent, and fifth grade is 10 percent decrease of 17 percent. So we worked hard. And I can tell you with those fourth and fifth graders, we assess them today, and we see some a lot of movement um, today, so they're starting to be and you will see my group that does be. Mary Ann is our title teacher who works around all of this data and really focuses on, on our student moves and how they've made the growth through those rotations. Um, she has done an amazing job with really meeting the kids where they are in order to see that growth. And we are really proud of the progress that this program has made and the continuous efforts of our teachers in running different groups adding different programs in order to, or adding different lessons within book rooms in order to support all of our kids. So now that you have heard where we are, now comes the fun part. We would, yeah, let me go. Yeah? <laughs> yes? One? Absolutely. It's 33 students as the 82 have improved. So here's what we're talking about when we talk about step hours. One thing to know about fifth and fourth grade, um, they actually, most of them started in our fluency and comprehension group. They are still in it. That is not one that we, we monitor that bi-weekly through AIMS org, but it's not one they are actually reading full novels in those groups which you're going to see with our fifth graders. So these students don't move the same way our first, our K2 do, because they are actually in those foundational skills. Where our fourth and fifth graders, and most of our fifth graders are sitting in the comprehension skills, which are book studies. So you're not going to see the same type of growth. Those students who are moving, it's because they started in foundational skills versus starting in a comprehension group. Any other questions before I move? Wonderful. They are so excited to show you the great work that they're doing. So we are going to start with rotations. And families, please feel free to join. Uh, board members, I have added a clipboard to your table. If you could, we have postcards that we like to give students. And if you could, at each group, just leave a postcard for our students on what you saw and what you appreciated. We're going to start with Ms. Neal's first graders in goal setting. They're ready. Direct, Director Thibodeau and Director Madigan, if you can start at that first group. Second group is differentiated instruction with our fifth graders. If you could, Mr. Uh, Hazel Beeler and Mr. Rowe. <laughs> Bonnie has been helping me because when I get nervous, if I read some of those names uh, phonetically, it's all off. So, yeah, I need to write it the way that I say it. Uh, if you guys can please move to our fifth grade in our second orientation, Director Kinsler, Mr. Willis, Ms. Christensen, we have the words for you. If you could please start with our third grade, and Director Tracy, Mr. Rad, and Mr. Lee, if you could please join our What Why How. Like I said, families, please feel free to get up, take pictures, and listen to the presentation. Each rotation will be a total of five minutes. Oh, you're right. Oh, are we going? Yes, we're going clockwise. Thank you. And this time starts now. Thank you.
Um, if you would gather once again here in the middle, and we will come to a close this evening.
just a comment on the poll. From what we've seen here tonight, what I took away from it is that every single one of these students that were here, and this is just a handful of the entire school, but they know what they're doing and why they're doing it. And those posters over there, um, you know, when I was young, it was because I said so. Um, we, didn't, we didn't get to have the lies to anything, and I absolutely love um, that the kids are provided with the lies they get to create their lives themselves, and they know it, and they know why. So um, that, that's that's just fantastic. And I do have one small little. Um, next time you ask us to write your own notes, give me more time. <laughs> It was a wonderful experience, and I thank you guys for that. Well, I'd like to start by thanking Mr. Garcia and the Quarter of Admissions. I had no idea Hot Cross Bun had that great <laughs> lyric. <laughs> um, and impressive. The kids were smiling and obviously having fun with it, and that's what we like to see. So thank you, Mr. Garcia. Um, also, I just want to recognize not just one, but I want to recognize the passion and fun that you two leaders are exhibiting in the school, and I have seen and heard the positive effect that you're having on the culture here. So thank you for that work. And I asked about the data, um, but I didn't acknowledge the progress that you're making and the clear it's, it's just so impressive to see. I know it's the work of the students that are resulting in those numbers, but the dedication and the commitment from your teachers and your leaders and all the support they have at the school to accomplish that. I, I will always zero in on the data, but I just want to recognize that progress and how important it is for our district and our community. So thank you for that work. And students and teachers at the tables, but we're still here. <laughs> Just well done. You know, I echo what the other board director said that it's impressive to see the kids in command of what they're learning and leading their own learning uh, and, and being, you know, setting their own goals and teaching each other, explaining how things come together, you know, being patient and acknowledging other viewpoints. Like that was just all evident. And, and anyway, I'm excited and I look forward to seeing more as the years go on. So thank you. And thank you. That's not how I learned when I was little. And uh, I just want to acknowledge you all for uh, taking a fresh look at how your kids are being educated and supporting them when they're doing something different maybe than you learned when you were in school. Um, all right. So that was four comments. Is there anything else? Um, as you ladies know, um, I have a lot of grandmothers set up with their students, and um, I just wanted to say uh, April is Autism Awareness Month, and I wear blue for Autism Awareness, and I want to thank you for supporting the Life Skills class, and thank you for supporting someone who steered my heart, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right. With that, I will adjourn. Did you have anything? <laughs> no. With that, I will adjourn the meeting at 7.17 tonight.